In the short time that I've been on YouTube, today's video is by far the one that you've been requesting the most. Today, I take you through my small, or as one of you mentioned, micro shop, to show you a little bit about how I'm making the best use of the space that I've found so far. As I take you around this small shed workshop, I, I want you to keep in mind that this is a work in progress. Uh, so if you have any tips or suggestions that go beyond, oh, you should trade this tool for that tool and actually get into shop organization for a, a micro shop like this one, I would love to hear from you in the comments. But let's, let's just dive right into what I've been doing in uh, the short while that I've been playing around with ways to organize this shed. This setup here is actually pretty new for me. I've only had it for a couple of months with my work table being an outfeed table and actually having a full size table saw. When I first got started with everything in this shed, I thought it would be a great idea to keep everything against the outer walls. And so that's what I did for a while, uh, but really it, it has been a big boost to my productivity to actually move my outfeed table slash work table away from the wall. So now I can stand on one side and have the table saw moving to my outfeed table, or I can stand back here and I can be working at the table and doing whatever I need to do here. The one downside that I will say about that is if I'm in the middle of doing something, for example, working on this bread box right here, I would find that I would have pieces laid out for assembly or for testing, but then I'd need to cut something and everything would have to get shifted around to be able to make room for whatever I was cutting. So th that can be a bit of a pain, but again, it's a small space. I'm willing to do what I need to do to make things work in my limited room with the limited money that I have. So let's start on this wall right here. This is actually uh, the double doors to my shed, which I've put some foam insulating in. This is my table saw, my router table right here. Basically what I have here is my saw blade storage. I've got a number of different blades, just really easy to get right here, really easy to put away. They're nice and protected and get moved around. I got my whole dado set right here as well. And then my shims over here. Right here, as you've seen in some of my other videos, I have my router table in the extension wings or the extension arms of my table saw. I lucked out and the tabletop that was already on my router table was actually the perfect size to sit just above the grooves that are in the rails here. So I was able to just glue, tack, screw some hardwood slides onto this. Uh, cut it to the right size, took off the end caps, slid it in place, checked everything, uh, and then put the end caps back on to keep it in place. And now it is like perfectly flush. I can use the table saw fence to use as a router fence if I want to. I can also tie this thing in right here. It screws down and use that as the fence as well. So uh, it's been working out really well so far. This cabinet here is probably my most and least favorite organizational thing that I've done. It was originally meant to be a router table before I moved the router table into the, the table saw extension. Uh, this here I've got right here, you can see uh, my bit storage and all of that. Originally this area here was supposed to be kind of a funnel for the, the router and everything to uh, drop into. I was going to have a door on here and you can see I was going to wire in um, a, a stop switch for my, my router which I'm now gonna have to adjust all of that. So this is kind of wasted space here, which is one of the things I hate about it. Um, I've got some different things like my setup blocks and some accessories and different things like that. I think these are my bushings uh, in there for my router. And then I've got this drawer here, which has just become a catch-all. I've got my, you know, my router, some sandpapers, a cutting mat, um, just different things, manuals, random stuff, uh, really, not great organization in this drawer, which is another thing. I love the big deep drawer, but I'm definitely not utilizing space well in here. And then I've got this big blank space underneath my table saw. And that space is really something that has me strongly considering cutting down this cabinet and, and rebuilding it to fit in the space underneath. However, there's one thing that I really, really, really like, and again, dislike about this. 
And that's having this top here. I actually really like having an area that, that keeps my table saw top from becoming a catch-all and instead becomes the place for easy access to all of my table saw accessories and the things that I need on a regular basis. The downside with having this super convenient table here is that as soon as I want to use my router table, it gets a little bit awkward. I, I've got this space here to work in, but if I want to be working on something this way, especially using the fence that's actually supposed to go to my router table, I, I run into a big issue because I've got this cabinet in my way. And so I'm kind of trying to figure out a, a couple different things I could do, maybe modify the cabinet to go under the table saw and then put a shelf uh, just right here for all of the things that I need for my table saw. I think that could work really well. Let me know if you have any ideas for the space that might help out in that way. A really big change that I made to my table saw when I got it is trying to get some kind of dust collection on the thing. So you'll see here, I went and I sealed around the top with some caulking and foam. Uh, this is just a, an old foam camping mat that I tried to kind of create a way for this to be able to rotate and this to be able to move, but to still seal everything off. I also really didn't like the way that it was collecting dust. I would just get a massive pile of dust under the saw. So what I did is I, I built myself kind of this frame that goes around the base of the saw and then comes out here in a nice four inch dust port at the bottom going into my dust collector. This area with my table saw is definitely still in need of some adjustment and improvement, but it is light years better than when I first got the saw or even when I first moved into the shed. Hey, if you're really liking this video or maybe some of the other videos of mine that you've seen and you wanna keep on seeing more or help support this channel as I try to grow it and get the word out there about working in a small space and just enjoying woodworking as a hobby, why don't you go and click that subscribe button and make sure to click the like icon as well so that YouTube knows that you want more videos videos like this. So right here you have my bandsaw. Uh, this is a, uh, a rigid, I want to say 14002 or something like that. Uh, I did end up adding the riser block and everything from Grizzly. That one fits and I just painted it gray here so that it would match a little bit better with everything. But uh, yeah, I mean this, this saw, is, it's been pretty good. Um, it's my first bandsaw so it's very possible that it's not great, but to me it does everything that I've been wanting it to do. I really enjoy using it. I've also modified the bandsaw stands just a little bit. I added in some shelving here in which I have some of my smaller offcuts, some bandsaw blades in their boxes, um, extra cool blocks, and a few things like that. I know it's a fairly hotly contested item, but I went with French cleats here on my shed wall. I had pegboard, I still use it a little bit for some odds and ends because you can pack things a little bit tighter without building custom stuff for things on pegboard, but overall, uh, doing the French cleat thing has just been absolutely amazing. You can see I've got my uh, DeWalt plunge router and with fixed base and all of its accessories right here on the wall. I've got my Ryobi battery powered jigsaw up here, and these things are able to move around freely. I've also got random orbit sander and uh, vacuum attachment and all of that on this wall with all of my different types of sandpaper here. Some personal protective equipment over on the wall. Okay, and so you can see my clamp racks up here on the top. Uh, basically what I, I did is I've got it nice and easy to get clamps on and off. So my, my parallel clamps back here, I've got some pipe clamps, F-style clamps. On the side of this one I've gone and I've attached a little L here where I've got some of my my fence clamps and different squeeze clamps and things. That's actually probably the biggest design mistake that I've made on the whole thing. Uh, it can get a little bit unbalanced and putting my other clamps on they just get in the way of each other that's something I definitely want to change in the future over here on this wall I've also got a bunch of stuff that's just randomly in the pegboard so I've got you know a clamp for for corners I've got a big level I've got my coping saw I've got a little uh, flush cut dovetail saw here uh, I've got a, a Craig track thing that has never worked all that great for me and I sometimes wonder why I still have it um, I've got a, a little paint scraper here for peeling boards apart. And I may as well show you this as well. Here's my trash can. Here's my shop vac. Plugs into the lights up top. So yeah, it, it works. And right here I have the tool that it seems like everybody on YouTube has. I actually got it before I started seeing it all over YouTube. It's Rigid's uh, all-in-one like oscillating belt sander and spindle sander. 
I really like this thing. I know that there's some people who I, I really enjoy their videos, but uh, they just have a very different opinion of this than I do. I think it works great. Uh, I think that the value is unbeatable. So this is what I've had here. I think I picked it up on sale for like 150 Canadian or something at one point from Home Depot, which was awesome. So this here, this stand was actually originally supposed to be a flip top stand. I have all of the stuff for it. I just started realizing that sometimes I'm not sure that it's worth the effort to make it a flip top stand. I'd, I'd have to pull it out to be able to flip it and I don't really want to do that. There's not the space to do that. And when I need the planer, I can honestly just pull it out, run it low, or pick up the thing, put it on my workbench, and run it there, or take it outside. So, I don't know. You Let me know. What's your experience with flip top stands? It just doesn't seem practical for this small of a space. And then I've put a drawer in the bottom of this as well. And uh, again, this one's maybe a little bit less random, but still feels really random to me. In here I've just got some paste wax, I've got some blanks that I made for table saw inserts, so if I get a new blade or need something special for maybe a certain angle or anything like that, you know, you can see here, um, I made a specific one for 51.8 degrees, I think I needed that for the bread box I was doing or something like that, or that I'm still working on. Some spare spindle sanding things, lead for my pencils, you know, just the general junk drawer type of idea. Not necessarily super interesting, but I've got a lot of my jigs just sitting here against the wall. I used to have another place for them, but when I got the new table saw and started rebuilding some of my jigs, made them bigger, I just stopped working quite the same. On this back wall here, I just have more French cleats. So we've got just over here some of my chisels as well as just some random cans of spray paint that I have there. I, I don't actually remember putting them there. I've got some of my tapes, really easy access to those, as well as right here, just kind of a random assortment of marking knives and marking gauges and pens and pencils and those sorts of things that just stack up. And then a bunch of drill bits and Forstner bits and files and all of that. Right here, I made this custom paper towel holder. I actually really love this thing for my shop towels. It takes up very little space. Has this little peg here so that you have something to tear against. Uh, this, this, I'm really proud of this. I like this thing. Super simple. Just the peg and another peg and rough and just works. Good job. And then up here I've got a lot of my squares and a few C-clamps. Again, just to, to be really handy, pull them off back on. This was originally a jig for my other table saw and I ended up storing it up here using a French cleat on the back and what I realized that did is it created kind of this this shelf area so all of my flat jigs that fit up here I just kind of shove them in there and it's an easy place to get to them and just works. Again on my French cleat wall I've got this super handy drill and driver and battery storage rack kind of thing so it, it carries a lot of my screws, a lot of my diff different accessories like these triangles, batteries, uh, chargers, which oh, I don't usually like to leave these on here. All better. <laughs> I've got my Ryobi brad nailer, which honestly, if you need a brad nailer, I have an air compressor. I have a, uh, a pneumatic brad nailer that might technically be better. I love this thing. It is, it's awesome. Just get one. Some of my glues, I have started bringing some of my glue inside. We're into October now and here in Southern Alberta. When the temperatures get low, they get low and this is an unheated shed except for when I'm running my heater in here. So yeah, I don't like my glue freezing. So what's this monstrosity here? This is my shop filtration, which you basically will never see on in these videos because it is not quiet. Uh, essentially, it is a frame that I have a a box fan type thing, a floor fan that is mounted into this wooden frame suspended from the ceiling and then on all sides of it that the fan is not on, I have furnace filters. When there's sawdust in the air, that those little pieces of sawdust, it, it sucks it right in and really helps with the air quality in here. That's one of the things I don't like about shooting videos actually is in this shop here without that thing running, I, I have to step outside sometimes. It gets a little dusty. This one's a bit hard to show, but right up here is my dust collector. It's a really small, I think three quarter horsepower King Canada rolling slash wall mounted dust collector. And basically what I have done is I've piped the dust collector 
in a hard pipe and then ran it down with a flexible pipe and you saw it earlier plugged in to my table saw. That's the main thing that I use it for. Another thing you might find a little bit interesting, you can see that I've actually got some ducting that's running into the wall from the dust collector. That's because this little dust collector, when it is going through a bag, I had to make a decision between a bag that basically filtered nothing and just blew sawdust in the air so that I had enough power to suck anything up, or I had to use a bag that kept the air fairly clean, but then I barely had any suction. So instead, I found a third option, which is to vent outside the shed into the back of the shed. I've just got a trash can with a little um, dryer vent thing that blows the sawdust down into that trash bin outside. I haven't gone through a winter like this. I don't necessarily run my dust collector all the time. So I'm hoping that when I'm using my propane heater to heat the place, that running this doesn't completely sap the entire place of any kind of heat. That said, my propane heater heats this place very quickly, uh, which is one of the advantages of a small shop in the winter. Okay, so I know that at this point you might be wondering, uh, this is a woodworking channel, where's the wood? And so let me show you where I keep a lot of the wood in my shed. Basically, it's wherever I can find room. I've got piles of wood here. I've got lengths of wood up there. I've got piles of wood in the rafters. And as far as sheet goods go, I had to kick them out of my shed. I used to try keeping them in here and I had to move everything to even get one piece of sheet good in and out or put things away. And so those have been just relegated to a quick kind of A-frame stand that I built and threw underneath a tarp cover. And that brings me to the workbench slash outfeed table. Recently, I converted this to being able to use some dog holes. Also, I had to cut out a slot so that my splitter would be able to fit through the table and cut some, some framing out so that the motor could also fit underneath the table when it's pushed up against here. I am really liking the ability to use dog hole clamps and, and bench dogs and all of those sorts of things. It has been really neat. I'd love to add a bench vise as well. I'm just not exactly sure where to start with that. Really this workbench here, it started off as a Steve Ramsey woodworking for mere mortals or we weekend woodworker course, uh, basic mobile workbench, I think he calls it. And it used to sit against one of my walls and then eventually I realized that I wanted it to do more. And so that's what I began to do there. Underneath is just some open space that Ever since I, I moved its positions and rearranged the shop, I really haven't figured out what to do in there. Um, I'm sure I'll figure out at some point for now. It's just, if I have a random thing like a belt sander, throw it in there and it collects dust. I don't know. I gotta rebuild stuff. As you can see, I fit a crazy amount of stuff in this really, really small shed and I'm still managing to be able to do woodworking. Obviously, there are some limitations on the size of projects that I can build in here, but for the, the average size project up to about the size of a coffee table that I have been working on, I love this space. I would love something bigger, but I love this space. Hopefully seeing a little bit of the way that I've organized my shop, my, my shed, will help inspire you to figure out new ways that, that you also can begin to work in the space limitations that you've been given. Because let's face it, not all of us have thousand square feet or 10,000 square feet garages or, or shops or 500 square feet or 200 square feet or 100 square feet. Huh. But at the end of the day, it's about using the space that you have right now and making the best of it so that you can just enjoy the hobby of woodworking. I've definitely got some other video ideas that I'm really wanting to put out there. So I really hope that you'll check back in soon to see what I have coming down the pipe. I've got some Christmas project videos and a few other things on the way. So uh, leave a comment, tell me what you like, uh, even tell me what you dislike. You know, you can tell me that I'm funny looking. It, doesn't bother me. Uh, let, let's let's be kind. Let's be respectful in the comments there. Uh, let's leave our suggestions. Let's help one another out. Help me grow, um, and let's help each other grow. And just learn the best ways that we can utilize the space that we're in, and uh, some of the cool tips and tricks that we found along the way too.